Hello everybody out there in YouTube land. This is Good Times for All, or Zachary Zabala if you prefer. In this video we'll be taking a look at the incoherent magnetics of the gravity beast. We will start with a quote from Ken Wheeler. That which we call magnetic attraction, in a conventional sense, is absolutely 100% no different than gravity. The only difference is field coherency, or in this case, anti-field coherency. An incoherent magnetic field is created when multiple magnetic pieces are all crammed together with their poles facing in different directions. The sporadically placed poles seem to cancel each other out, making the piece as a whole weaker than just one of the individual magnets. When we have a group of magnets, all in a straight line, the poles align, creating an even stronger, coherent magnetic field. Think of it as a light source. A incoherent light would be the bulb in your ceiling light fixture. At 60 watts, it will light up a room, but does little damage to anything the light touches. Now take the same amount of watts and apply it to a laser. A coherent laser light at 60 watts would cut through your house like a hot knife cutting through butter. In the first demonstration, we have two incoherent objects made of little magnet bearings hanging from some string. I placed a ruler behind to show how close they get to one another before they are forced together. The closest they came was around 7 eighths of an inch, or 2.25 centimeters. Next, I use a single bearing from each of the masses. The much smaller, yet more coherent magnets were forced together around 2 and 1 quarter inches, or just over 5.5 centimeters. So even though there is much more magnetic potential stored in the larger mass of multiple magnets, the incoherent magnetic field they create is weaker than just two individual, much smaller and more coherent magnets created of the same materials. In the next demonstration, I will test field strength of two objects next to the same magnet. I will be using a smaller, yet more coherent ring magnet compared to the larger, incoherent group of magnets. As you can see, the magnets force the smaller magnet to it around 7 eighths of an inch, or 2.25 centimeters. The much smaller, ring magnet, however, forced the smaller magnet from a distance over 2.5 inches, or just around 6.5 centimeters. With our technology of today, there are other means of testing the magnetic field. In this next demonstration, I will be using the sensors in my phone to measure the strength of the magnetic field of our two objects. Our incoherent magnets read only 15 microteslas at around one half of an inch, or 1.25 centimeters. It topped out at 65 microteslas when touching the phone to the magnet. Notice the smaller, more coherent magnet starts registering on the meter from much further away. It is already up to 100 micro teslas when it reaches the half inch mark. In 
In my last demonstration, we will see, with our own eyes, the size of the magnetic field both objects create using a ferrocell. As you can see, the smaller, more coherent magnet creates a long, easily observed magnetic field. You can clearly see the poles of the magnet as I flip it over from one side to the other. Now, looking at the incoherent object, made of many magnets with their poles facing different directions, we have a much more difficult time observing any magnetic lines at all. We can make out some weak, very short lines just around the edges at certain points. In closing, incoherent magnetism is an absolute in nature and is always present. Without a doubt, it plays a role in the phenomena we call gravity. This is Good Times for All, signing out. As always, thanks for watching.